Hello everybody, Bill Puckett here, coming to you live. Uh, I'm going to do a product review, but not a new product review, an old, my older product review. It's a Porter Cable bandsaw that uh, I've had for maybe about two years. I love the machine. It's the floor model, and uh, I'm just going to go through it real quick with you and talk to you about it, tell you about everything. I'm not a professional woodworker at all, and excuse my messy garage, we just moved here and we're working on it, so. But anyway, this is, like I say, the floor model, Porter Cable brand, 120 volt motor, 120 volt motor, so regular plug outlet. Uh, cast iron on the tabletop, cast iron neck, and I don't know what any of the formal names for any of these are, but cast iron here, very heavy, sits very stable, no, no real danger of it falling over. Uh, this is the inner workings. I've had cheaper, by no means is this the top of the line table saw that you can get, but I've, I've had cheaper table saws and they're always a pain to keep the blade tracking um, center of the pulleys. This one has not been a problem. And I did watch several YouTube videos on how to make adjustments to the bearing that the blade floats against back here, sorry. And then these, these guides that keep the blade relatively straight. So, and I still probably don't have that adjusted correctly, but I'm working on it. Uh, one thing that I didn't like about the machine the way it came not necessarily the machine but the the blade that came with it it was the high speed carbon steel blade and when i was pushing through thicker material or maybe a little more dense material it didn't cooperate so it didn't it wasn't to my liking i guess i should say so I switched it out and I did, I've never regretted it to, and the, excuse the, the gum, there's a little bit of gum on the blades. They need to be cleaned up. Let's see if I can clear that up. So now I switched to a carbide, carbide tipped blade. You can see the, the carbide tips on the blades, the teeth, and uh, what a world of difference that makes. What a world of difference. So, I'll give a little demonstration. Can't think of everything. I, I should I should uh, hook this up to a shop vac, and someday I probably will. And that's probably one of the reasons why I get so much gum on the uh, on the pulleys, which will eventually cause the belt or the the blade to run off. But I've not done that yet. And there is some sort of method to cleaning these these pulleys up. I usually shop back it out, but like I say, I've had this for two years. I've cut a good many parts and pieces on it and uh, have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's one of, one of my favorite tools. To give you a little bit of few specs, I have a tape measure. Here, it's hard to do this with one hand. Let's see here. So from the back of what we'll call this arm back here, to the blade is about 13 and a half inches. So that is the, I guess, the radius of cut that you would be able to do with this bandsaw. The, the depth of material that you would be to cut, able to cut is about six inches. I know it's only, it's, it's set at about four right now, but it's, it's able, you can adjust that up all the way to, and where you could cut material about six inches. I've never really had the need to do that, but it could. So I'm gonna close her up. So close the cabinet up. It's got a, of course, upper, upper cabinet where you can look at the pulley on the top. A lower cabinet where you can look at the pulley on the bottom and it make sure it's tracking correctly. It's belt driven inside of here. So motor pulley, motor shiv to the other shiv on the back side of the big pulley. It has a 
shop back attachment, which I should use, but I don't. That's the reason for all of this. And it has a cabinet on the underside, which is nothing more than storage space. I have the manual down there. And that is that. So let's fire it up and try to do some demos. I should have practiced with one hand first, but I didn't. So this is a uh, an old piece of wood, uh, probably, I don't know, three quarter, one inch thick, maybe pine, probably pine. Looks like an old tobacco stick, to be honest with you. But we'll slice through it. Okay, one other thing, this, this plastic insert piece, and I do not know the name of this. I was cutting some thinner material with it one day and the material got stuck between, I'm not touching the blade, y'all. So I'm keeping, I'm not that silly, but uh, I, was, I was cutting some thinner material and a thin piece come off and wedge down in between the uh, plastic piece and the blade and broke this. So I'm not, I don't really like that plastic piece insert, but it's probably operator malfunction more than equipment malfunction. But I do think that they should have made that a little more sturdy. But anyway, if you so if you're cutting off a small piece like this, that's there's the opportunity for that to happen. But if you if you've got it resting on this, this part on the steel, this part on the steel slicing through, that's not likely to happen. I'm gonna cut through it, and then we'll talk a little bit more. Carbide chip blade, pretty much butter, white butter. Like I say, I'm trying to do this with one hand, so it's a little more difficult. There's some, uh, some curve I guess. So what happened there was, again, I'm not real satisfied with the, the plastic piece, but this piece here, because there's some height difference between plastic to steel, got hung up on there and I was having to push it up and then scrub it. So it will cut some, so this blade, let's talk about that just a touch. Oh, carbide tooth blade, sorry for the shakiness is about from tooth to the back side of the blade looks to be about a half an inch if you are pretty close to it so depending on the thickness of that blade so half inch and there are some charts out there that will tell you so the thinner the blade the tighter radius cuts you can make the thicker the blade the, the less tighter cut you can make, or however you want to say that. So I don't know what radius that is. That's probably eh, maybe at least a one inch radius, you know? So it will do that even with that thick a blade. And uh, I haven't really had the need to do fine scroll type work yet. I'm usually cutting out like Adirondack chairs or something like that, but keep that in mind when you purchase a blade for what you're going to do. So you may want a carbide tip blade that is that is thinner where you can cut tighter radius bends. Uh, setup on the thing wasn't that bad. It did come in some pieces. I think I had to assemble the the cabinet to the base and maybe even the the table to the thing. So uh, we I can remember doing that a couple years ago. So like I said not a new product review but uh, just a used product review. Sometimes it's better, I think. So the on off switch right here. Uh, yeah. Like and just to prove that it will cut through some heavier material, which you probably should have cut this. So that is a four by six post, something that you would uh, uh, treat 
or uh, used to build a pole barn or something like that. Why you would ever want to scroll saw or something like this, but you never know, something decorative. I've seen some pretty crafty people out there do some stuff with this. But there again, I'm doing this with one hand, so bear with me. Here we go. how many seconds that took with one hand but that carbide tip blade will smoke through that you can see i got a little bit of a curve on the end there but i was trying to do it with one hand so it makes it more difficult the cut is very smooth smooth enough you know smooth enough. piece this thing back together and that's what that's what we cut through by that thick so it'll do it to it i'm very satisfied with it it certainly certainly works for what i do which is mostly uh, carpentry type stuff. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I would recommend it. You know, I mean, it's not it's not like your fine furniture building table saw quality, but uh, certainly good enough for me. Hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe. I'll try to do more of these. Thank you all. Bye.